This video is sponsored by Mother Nature. In particular, nature's original umbrella. If it's wet and raining outside, don't forget nature's original umbrella. Brought to you by Mother Nature. So it is July 9th, 2024. And I want to talk about clean technology. That's the term I've, I decided to use. And I want to explain clean technology for those that are interested. I watched this, I watched this um, discussion between 19 Keys and an individual, um, I forgot his first name, but his last name is Muhammad. So, and I apologize for that. And part of the discussion was uh, what others had been uh, calling the mothership. You know, there's all these theories out there about these esoteric and um, extra, extraterrestrial theories out there about motherships, about higher order beings and about aliens and I'm not a stranger to talking about aliens and motherships and that sort of thing not at all because you see these themes described in science fiction novels you see these themes described in science fiction movies right so you see these things play out, right? And for those of us that pursue engineering and science, primarily through the avenue of technology, these themes can be inspirational when you see them in movies like Star Trek or Star Wars, Close Encounters of a Third Kind and Stargate. You, you see these things play out and you say, yeah, it would be nice to have replicators and teleporters and warp engines and all, all manner of things. It would be nice to be able to walk through a, a round circular disk, a wormhole, and see another civilization indeed a different landscape and have different experiences and it would be absolutely thrilling to travel the cosmos to travel the galaxies and explore strange new worlds and to seek out new life and new civilizations and hopefully where you will meet individuals whose philosophy is to long live and prosper it would be absolutely amazing to have that type of experience. Or if you're in the warlike modality, to suit up and go somewhere and like uh, Thor, go into one of the nine realms and you got you a titanium spear and you have mastery of interdimensional martial arts and you just can go at it and drive for a mass civilization a intergalactic civilization as some kind of Jedi or whatever it may be but these themes can be very inspirational to many people so the thing is though as I've moved through uh, what we call the decades you know my viewpoints on these things have changed and more so for me, I'd say, because I was exposed to these things from the time I was born. You know, my parents were into science fiction and fantasy as a genre. They were also hard-nosed realists. But growing up, I only really picked up on the, or I only really embraced the, um, the sci-fi fantasy side of their interests. 
I let, I let them be the adults and the hard-nosed realists, right? But I think they also had an agenda to uh, see me inspired. They wanted to see me inspired. Um, my father's dream for me was for me to be an engineer. I didn't turn out quite the, the, the level of engineer that um, he meant. You know, he was talking more of a, he wanted me to be a, an electrical engineer. But um, I was more interest, interested in software engineering. But, hey, I still turned out to be an engineer. You know, and, um, and my mom, she just wanted me to be tapped into my heart. And to see that there was more to life than the five senses or the six senses. She wanted me to understand life at a very intuitive and tapped in level. So she uh, inspired in me a deep appreciation for philosophy and for intuition. Because intuition is oftentimes the supreme language, even beyond mathematics, when precision just doesn't quite cut it. So when I see people talk about UFOs and aliens and all this stuff, I have to admit I am bored. That that doesn't interest me because I've spent a tremendous amount of my childhood and my early adulthood contemplating these things among other things. So where people end up, I've already been there and I'm over it. But I still get the inspiration part. I still get that. So so the thing of it is, is that fiction and narrative can be a great way and a more efficient way to explain concepts that would be far more difficult to receive if it could be received or comprehended at all through formal methods and formal, formal discourse, right? See, formal, formality has its place, but it turns out that formality's place is a small niche in the grand experience of living and being a living being. Formality is just a tool. So is narrative, but narrative tends to be a much more general purpose and more widely applicable tool, in my view, than, than formality. And when I say formality, I'm talking about trying to understand and describe the world through the lens of European science or Western science, I think we can go too far with that. We don't always need to understand or at least describe everything from an atomic level or from the standpoint of string theory or theoretical physics or quanta, um, you know, wave particle duality. You, you just don't, you don't always need that because what ends up happening is that you get so lost in that descriptive method that what you're actually trying to understand disappears. It disappears altogether. And then at some point you have to start over again. And I, I have reached a point where I see progression based on the foundation of things that work, even if they're not scientific, such as ancient knowledge the ancient knowledge of health, the ancient knowledge of wellness, the ancient knowledge of mind, the ancient knowledge of rhythm and cymatic, right? And I may not be the best practitioner of those things, but what I understand is that if one were to leverage those things more and not try to re-explain those things through science, so much where you slice off the context, the spirituality and the context from those things to which now you have a much more sterile entity that you're trying to use in a favorable practical application for yourself. So when I watched high level conversations, it's abbreviated HLC and it is produced by 19 keys and it is on the earn your leisure channel 
there was an interview, I believe it was last month in June of 2024, I believe it was in June of 2024, where 19 Keys was talking with a gentleman who I call Muhammad, and they were talking about aliens and UFOs and the mothership. So I don't rehearse these discussions, so I don't have notes or anything like that. You know, because if I had notes in rehearsal, you would know it. But the thing is, I remember that there being a, I think it's a three hour discussion with a gentleman named Muhammad. And he said many things in that discussion, and I, I liked it, it was, it was a good discussion. It was very aspirational, inspirational. It was more positive than negative. And one of the things that they discussed or that Muhammad was presenting was this concept of clean technology, right? And so it resonated with me. And Lighting Keys with his, um, I believe his producer, I think it's David Ameki, if I got that name right. I know the last name's Ameki. Do a, does a great job in producing those those discussions through video. There's animations. There are great still shots. Beautifully done. Beautiful camera work. The best there is, I believe. So when they visualized the clean technology as they was was explaining it, it to me it was profoundly truthful, profoundly correct and this is how Mohammed described clean technology you take an iPhone or a Google Pixel either one you take those devices you put them in your hand right and I would I would show you one but I'm actually being recorded on one right now so and I only have one but anyway you take that phone and you put it in your hand the way Mohammed described it was this this nice uh, tool, this device, as much as it has the potential to inform you and give you great service in terms of the information that you can access and gather, at the very same time, it's harming you because of the EMF that it's generating. Now, I did my own research prior to all of that, and I've looked into EMF right that's why I no longer wear smartwatches I wore one for like two years but I stopped wearing it and I gave it away to Goodwill because that's like I'm not wearing EMF on my wrists and most of the time I keep my phone stored away I don't really wear it on me I do have a clip where I if I have to wear it on me I can but most of the time I try to keep my phone away from me and for 10 years I had like a flip phone so but when I switched to smartphones, yeah, I broke the first three. I kept dropping them on the concrete. You know, I just didn't know any better. And so it was like, yeah, you need to invest in an OtterBox. So I, ever since I invested in an OtterBox, I've been able to keep, keep up with a smartphone. It's not like I drop them that much, but in the beginning I did, you know, because I handled them like I handled a, smart, a flip phone. Flip phones, you don't need all of that. They, they are just durable they're just durable and I'm not talking about a galaxy flip I'm talking about a flip phone that has no touch screen it's just number a number pad and a little screen to show you what number you're calling right that flip phone so anyway and what I liked about the flip phone is that most of the time I had it on airplane mode so and it was just a text text and talk plan and it was it was very affordable so anyway and if i needed internet i'd used to use a mobile hotspot you know a little actual mobile hotspot box but what muhammad was describing was you know you had a little phone you had this, this smart what they call smartphone or cell phone and it's hurting you at the same time it's helping you and i'm going to be a little um colorful in what i'm about to say but this is how they said it. I'm going to say it the way that Muhammad said it, okay? So try not to be offended. But Muhammad is basically saying that these technologies are designed by the devil. 
many of the technologies that we use, they're demonic in, in many ways. In that um, you've got the batteries coming out of the Congo. There is blood and misery associated with everything that we use. And that if the thing is, is that I use these technologies and I deal with them. I'm aware of what was paid in blood and misery to produce these tools that I use. Where there's laptops, tablets, chat GPT, and cell phones. And so, I hope it's not a cop, cop out, but it might be a cop out. But the only way that I can go forward and use these things is the only thing I can really say is it's inevitable to have these tools to be part of this society. And in many ways, this what I'm saying is not 100% true. That's, that's why I have to be careful. You know, but it's like, yes, if you're going to apply for jobs and you're going to work in uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and you're going to do these things, then you have to opt into these tools that have blood on them. So it's kind of like being a citizen of the United States, right? Or a country like the United States where you're a citizen of that country and you may not have voted for the politician that went over and sent people off to war or to a military action and the result of that politician's decisions was to was the the death of hundreds of thousands of soldiers the death of uh, un, uh, un well you can count them but almost an innumerable uh, number of, of civilians, right? You have civilians, you got women and children that are killed. And you're part of a society that has mechanisms that, that do that. You're part of a society that does that. Doesn't mean that you pick up and you move somewhere else. Because first of all, where are you going to go? Right? There, there are places in the world that don't participate in that sort of thing. Right? But to the extent that you are firmly established in where you live and what you do, then you have to take the good with the bad. And that's what it is with the technologies that we use. But I'm pretty thrilled about this concept of clean technology because it is a way out of that, right? So what is this clean technology? Well, clean technology is the technology that It is technology that is not only healthy for a person to use, but it has no adverse side effects. And we're not talking about known side effects, right? We're talking about it is completely devoid of adverse side effects. So higher dimensional, higher order technology. And I have to say higher dimensional, higher order, because it's kind of like this, okay? Every time you walk on the ground, right? Every time you walk on the ground, you're walking on bacteria, you're walking on insects, you're walking on microorganisms, right? And there are religious communities like the Jains, for example, who go to great lengths to avoid disturbing the the smaller, less seen life forms among us. But it's very difficult to do that. It's very difficult to do that, right? And you also have to be careful because if you do it the wrong way, then you're in such a sterile environment that your own biological system would fall apart. 
Humans as we are constructed in this biological avatar are not designed for sterility. That's why some of the more extreme aspects of Star Trek, for example, isn't a practical reality for, it's not a, it's not a good model or blueprint for life, for living, right? Because what if the replicator technology takes you in too sterile of a direction, for example? What if you destroy your microbial organization through teleporters, right? You know, they, these are things you have to really think about if you come from the evolutionary heritage that we come from. In the descriptions of the Anunnaki, for example, you know, one of the big summaries of the Anunnaki, at least among those that have studied this topic, this is what they say is that the Anunnaki achieved a level of ascension through technology, but they could only go so far because they did it through technology. And so their ability to continue to ascend and to reach the level of the Most High was stunted on the basis of their over-reliance on technology. And then from there, you get the tales of Atlantis and all of this sort of thing. All right, so if you're going to have truly clean technology, it's going to be on a basis that far exceeds what we have here on Earth. And that's what was so inspirational about the discussion between 19 Keys and Muhammad. You know, that was one thing that I really took away from there. I took away some other things, right? You know, I, I take things from different things that I, I observe. But, yeah, you know, uh, Dr. Muhammad has a PhD. He's very well studied in his, um, in his topic areas. And he made a very clear and cogent case about what's called clean technology. And then I was talking to one of my relatives today. I introduced them to this concept and they brought up the concept of clean energy. So then I thought about the concept of clean energy, the way we talk about it here on earth. You know, we talk about solar, we talk about wind, um, you know, those kinds of things, right? And so this is what they meant. What I realized is that real clean technology is tapped into energies in such a way where you minimize or you somehow are able to have physical displacement, physical three-dimensional displacement in a way that does not um, inconvenience what we call the lower life forms. So you'd have to have energies like that, energies that worked on that basis. So I think, I think these concepts that I talked of, that I'm talking about, or that I'm describing here, I think they exist in sci-fi. Um, nothing comes to mind in terms of like, yeah, nothing really comes to mind. It's actually starting to rain too. But yeah, nothing comes to mind. And But I wanted to explore this concept of clean technology. And I think there's a potential for many of us in how we build software applications, or in the case of Terrence Howard, how we engineer certain technologies, physical technologies. I think there's a possibility for us to take our mind somewhere else where we're not so invested in the science that we've been taught. We can, we can study it, and maybe there's some things we can take from that. But like Stephen Wolfram, I watched his three-hour discussion with um, Donald Hoffman. It was very, very informative. I like the way they talk, by the way. I like the way Stephen Wolfram, uh, Stephen Wolf, Wolfram, who I've, uh, I've followed for a number of years. I've written blog posts about Stephen Wolfram's 
um, um, work that he's put out. Uh, I like Wolfram Alpha. The, the uh, you know I like the concept behind Wolfram Alpha, and I think that Wolfram Alpha and and those tools in Mathematica would be a way to help ChatGPT work a little bit better. But um, the thing with Stephen Wolfram is his stuff's expensive, so so I, I don't I don't buy into it. His stuff's expensive. So anyway, but but he is very smart. Um, and he explains things very well. And Donald Hoffman explained Markovian dynamics very well. And causal chains were explained very well in that three-hour discussion between Stephen Wolfram and uh, Donald Hoffman. But where I am going is a different new kind of science, right? Where we can really take inspiration from Gematria, sacred geometry, and even Euclidean geometry for all of its uh, faults, right? And we can take inspiration from that and maybe build a different type of science on the basis of geometry more so than math. So, nature has told me it's time to conclude. So, I thank the great nature for giving me this time and this venue to express these sentiments. This is the only day this week that I have available to have this discussion. The rest of my days and the days past uh, were pretty busy and will be pretty busy. And I really won't have a window of time to do um, discussions like this where I'm actually uh, in front of a camera. So that's why I'm doing more discussions where it's more podcast style with the AI generated art, right? I'm doing it more like that where I can express what I need to share, but I'm less dependent on venues. I'm less dependent on venues. And so that's why I am transitioning in that direction. So these types of um, dialogues will become increasingly rare, will become more rare. Um, because it uh, will simply fit in my schedule much more to um, to actually share my thoughts verbally um, with AI generated art that's uh, carefully selected for the topic at hand. So thank you for uh, listening to those that took the time to listen. I hope there was some valuable insights here and if there's more that needs to be said here then feel free to chime in on the comments I will respond I will follow up and um, like this video if you thought that there was something here and um, I will catch you later